Hello and welcome to Adelux on this new Lutron Homeworks QS tutorial where I will share with you my experience as an independent Lutron programmer. The subject of today is addressed to new programmers who start with Homeworks QS and I will just show you how I do start a new Homeworks QS database as well as a quick overview of my workflow using the Homeworks QS software. So without further ado, let's do it! So, how do I start a new Homeworks QS database? Well, first, please note that at the time of this recording, I'm using version 11.5, but I've been following that same process for years. Also, I never use a better version. In the type of high-end project I'm working on, I find it useless to experiment with a beta version. I always follow the wizard to make sure I've put in all the basic information. So the step one is project location. This is where I will tell the software where my project is geographically located. This is a very important step because it will provide the latitude and longitude information of the project onto the Lutron processor. So later on, if I have to program a time clock event, such as turning on the garden light 30 minutes before sunset, and since that time changes daily, that command will be correctly executed each and every day at the right time. If your location doesn't exist in the list, you can also create a new one with all the parameters needed. Also, since the processor time will sync with the time on my laptop, when I get to site, I will also make sure that the time on my laptop matches the project location. Step 2. Project information. This is where I will enter the project name, but also where I can add the information on the different people involved on the project. Those details are mainly used when generating reports. I like to put some information in there because it makes my report look more professional. So first, I will enter my own detail, and then I will enter the detail of the client, the architect, the electrical contractor, for example. In project option, I just make sure that the voltage information matches the type of equipment involved on that project. I will change the temperature scale to Celsius, and I will leave the currency setting as they are, as this doesn't really apply to my market. On step four, appearance. I found the appearance step very useful because it allows to preset colors and finishes for the Lutron keypad used in the project. And as a result, keypads will display that color in the software and in the various reports I will generate from it. Also, if I have to use a different color or finish for a specific keypad, I will be able to modify it in a database later on. Using the right color and finishes for keypad in the software will also avoid spending extra time and cost to send back wrong faceplates. Indeed, the great advantage of this information is when I put the list of equipment to purchase together because the system will use the accurate reference code for each product in the list of materials. And that will allow my client to order the correct type of equipment right from the start. Okay, well, let's click on finish for the database to finally open. Here is just a few words on my workflow when I start a new database. I will try to illustrate each step a little bit, but we will go a bit deeper for each of them in separate tutorials. First, as you can see, here is a series of tabs. Design, Program, Activate, Transfer, and Diagnostics. The way I build my Homeworks QS database is by working the tabs from left to right, which means that I will complete all the different steps listed on the drop-down list for each tab and then move on to the next one. So, I will start with the Design tab, but first, I will have to create the project layout with all the different rooms in that project. Once this is done, I will make sure that control is selected in the drop-down list, and I will add all the Lutron keypads, occupancy sensor, as specified on the floor plan or as already installed. I also call this section my input section or my front room equipment, which means that in here, I should have all the equipment that will be visible and from which the client will operate the system. Once I'm done with control, I move on to the next item on the list, which is load. Load will be where I'll add all my system outputs, so to speak, which are my lighting circuits, my motors, if I need to operate gates, garage doors, shutters, etc. Third-party blinds or non-Lutron blinds. 
my switch loads such as pumps or fans. Basically, I will enter all the elements listed on the load schedule. And you can check the link below for the tutorial about the load schedule. Once I'm done with loads, I move on to shades. So shade is only for Lutron shading solutions such as Sivoya QS roller blinds or Sivoya QS curtain track, for example. Remember, if I have a non-Lutron motorized blind in my project, I will create those in the load section. But if I do have Lutron blinds, then I will input all the relevant information in the shade section. And if in my project I don't have any of those, well, I will just pass and move on to the next item. Next, in equipment, I will create my Lutron panels with my Lutron modules, as well as any other or what I call my backroom equipment, such as power supplies or interfaces. This is probably the most important step as this is where I will assign all my loads to my Lutron system. In other words, this is where I'm going to tell the system where each load is physically connected on each module output, so the Lutron system know how and what circuit needs to be powered when a specific button is pressed, for example. So in a case where I'm using the software to design a Homeworks QS project, I will decide myself where those circuits need to be wired and I will generate a wiring report for the electrician to wire those circuits exactly as I've specified. Now, to complete this step, in a case where the Homeworks QS system has been designed by somebody else and I'm only commissioning and programming it, I will have to get the wiring report from the electrical contractor. And I will make sure to speak with the actual electrician that has wired the panel himself or herself just to guarantee that I have the latest update on the wiring of the panel and facilitate communication if I have questions later on when I test the circuits. Once I'm finished with equipment, I'll move on to link assignment. We need to remember that a Lutron processor has two Lutron communication links. In link assignment, this is where I'm going to tell the system on which link each Lutron equipment is connected to. Again here, if I design the system myself, I will decide on which link each Lutron equipment needs to be assigned to. And I will provide this information to the installer. And if I'm only commissioning a system that has been designed by somebody else, I will have to get this information from the installer. To finish, there is line item. This is where I can add the non-Lutron elements such as programming time, etc. So it can show up on the list of material for pricing, for example, but I never really use that. So once I'm done with all those elements in the design tab, I move on to the next tab, which is program. In the program tab, the first element in the list is device. Device is where I will program all the buttons on the Lutron keypads. In there, I will have access to all my keypads or input and also all the output such as lighting loads, blinds, contact closure, etc. created previously in the design tab. This is where I will create scenes so my client can dim the light and close the blind at the press of a single button when she wants to watch a movie or turn off the light and set the blind in the whole house when she leaves for work in the morning. When I'm done with the device, I will move on to time clock. Here, I will program events that will fully automate certain parts of the Lutron system, such as turning on and off the outside light, or to open and close the blinds automatically at a certain time of the day. I can also create multiple time clocks if I want to keep things nice and tidy. Then I will move on to occupancy, where I will do all my programming related to my occupancy sensors. Same for thermostat and sensor, if I have some in my project. So, device, time clock, occupancy, and to a certain extent, thermostat and sensor will be the main programming items I will complete at the start of a new project. But just so you know, this is also here that I will create and define specific scenes such as share scenes and area scenes. This is also here that I will customize the famous green mode, vacation mode and security mode, as well as define sequences and variables for conditional programming. Let's say that these are advanced settings and I will show you how I customize those on separate tutorials. Okay, so when I have my programming done, I'll move on to activate. 
We need to remember that each Lutron equipment has a unique serial number and that the system needs to know that number so it can ID each piece of equipment to route the communication correctly. And the Activate tab is where we tell the system who is who. So to work, a Lutron device needs to be activated and if it's not, then it won't work. Also, by activating the Lutron device, I somewhat test the communication wiring, as if I'm unable to activate a device, most of the time that can reveal a wiring issue. So to me, these steps serve two purposes. So same here, I will proceed following the items in the drop-down list. And first, I will activate my Lutron processor. This is also where I will set or get the IP information of my Lutron processor so I can communicate with it over Ethernet, either through a Wi-Fi router or directly connected to it with an Ethernet cable. Then I will select each processor link where I will find the list of devices as previously specified in the link assignment section under the design tab. I will then start the activation and activate each Lutron device one by one. Once I get here, I can transfer my database to the Lutron processor using the transfer tab. I need to have at least one homeware SQS processor activated to be able to transfer the database to it. If previously I've managed to activate all the device, that is great. But if some device have not been activated, so for example, if they haven't been installed yet, I can still transfer the database, but we need to remember that only the activated devices will work. Once the database has been transferred successfully, the first thing I do is I go to the last tab called Diagnostics and select Identify Load and test all the different outputs in my system. So the reason why this tab is blank is because I'm not connected to anything at present. But just so you know what I do when I get here, I will go to each lighting circuit one by one, flash it to make sure that the light that are flashing in the room match the circuit in my database. And then I will make sure I can switch it on, switch it off and dim it correctly. I will do the same thing for each fan, motor and contact closure. And I will also go to each group of Lutron blinds and make sure I can open and close them accordingly. To complete my initial diagnostics, I will then select Verify Device and in here, I will be able to see which device is communicating correctly or not and depending on the fault, will provide this information to the installer so they can fix the issue before my next visit. So, in conclusion, by following those steps, I'm sure that I haven't left anything undone and I've optimized the commissioning process by completing the basic step in a shorter amount of time as possible and therefore I can use the remaining of that time to work closely with the lighting designer or the homeowner on specific scenes, tailoring and fine-tuning their homeowner's QS system for their specific and unique needs. Voila, I hope you found this tutorial useful, especially if you're about to program your first homeowner's QS system. If you have any question, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much and talk to you again on the next tutorial.